Welcome back to the channel, where today's video we're going to be covering contraception in a whistle stop tool. Contraception can be confusing, and with guidance often changing, it's important to keep up to date for exams but also for your clinical practice. We're going to discuss the combined oral contraceptive pill, the progesterone only pill, intrauterine systems and devices, as well as injectable and implantable progestogens. But first, it'll be sensible to discuss emergency contraception, so let's dive straight in. We really need to be aware of three types of emergency contraception. The first is levonorgestrel, which must be taken within 72 hours of unprotected sexual intercourse, with a dose of 1.5 mg, but doubled if a BMI is above 26 or if the patient is above 70 kilos, and is 84% effective if used within the first 72 hours. Conveniently, we can also start hormonal contraception immediately after the usage of levonorgestrel. The trade name for this is Levonel. Ulipristal is an alternative and can be given up to 5 days or 120 hours post unprotected sex with a dose of 30 mg. The caveat here is though that no hormonal treatment will be effective up until 5 days afterwards. And finally, the intrauterine copper device is the final alternative here and must be inserted within 5 days of unprotected sex. It may also be fitted up to 5 days after the likely ovulation date. It can be kept in for contraception and is 99% effective in emergency contraception. The combined oral contraceptive pill is 99% effective if taken correctly, but patients need to be warned regarding the increased risk of VTE, very small increased risk of heart attacks and strokes, and an increased risk of breast and cervical cancer. It usually makes periods lighter and more regular, so it can be used therapeutically as well. However, some side effects include headaches, nausea and breast tenderness. With regards to starting the medication, if it's within the first 5 days of the new cycle, no extra precautions are necessary. However, other than that, it requires 7 days of barrier contraception. It's typically taken with 21 days with a 7 day break. However, recent guidance has supported the use of back to back preparations, which is usually up to 3 months before a withdrawal bleed. The missed pill rule can be quite confusing. Simply speaking, I've tried to break it down. One missed pill, take the next one as soon as possible. Two or more, well, it depends where you are in the cycle. Because if you're on week one, you need to consider emergency contraception and take the next one as soon as possible. If it's in week two and you've had seven pills continuously, then there shouldn't really be a need for emergency contraception. And if it's in week three, then back to back packs and no need for emergency contraception is needed. And all of the above is on the pretense that unprotected sexual intercourse has happened in that time. Practically speaking, though, usually it's recommended you take the next pill as soon as possible with seven days of barrier protection. There are a few contraindications that you need to be aware of as follows. Anyone over 35 with a smoking history of more than 15 a day, uncontrolled hypertension, migraine with aura, a VTE history, a personal history of stroke or ischemic heart disease, six weeks after birth, breast cancer or major surgery requiring immobilisation would all be UK MEC 4 conditions for exclusion. It might be worth familiarising yourself with the UK MAC system in general for your exams. Moving on to the progesterone only pill. The progesterone only pill is an effective alternative to the COCP with a 99% effectivity if used properly. It also can be used during breastfeeding and when the combined oral contraceptive pill is contraindicated, such as in smokers over 35 or those with a VT history. It does however cause irregular periods with some rise in incidental ovarian cysts. It often causes breast tenderness, weight gain, acne, headaches, but these often settle over time. It usually is commenced within the first five days of the cycle, however, it can be started at any time if there's an additional two days of barrier protection. The missed pill rule is a bit easier than the combined oral contraceptive pill, with less than three hours continue as normal, but if it's more than three hours, take the next pill as soon as possible and use barrier protection for the next two days. The only exception to this is Cerazet or Desigestrel, which is one particular progesterone only pill that gives you a 12 hour window. The only true UK MEC4 contraindications here are pregnancy or active breast cancer within the last five years. There are some UK MEC3 conditions including undiagnosed vaginal bleeding and ischemic heart disease and stroke, but it would be worth considering reviewing these yourself. Intrauterine contraception. 
When it comes to intrauterine contraception, we commonly are referring to the IUD, which is the copper coil, or the marina coil, the IUS, both of which are 99% effective, with the latter also used in menorrhagia. The IUD primarily prevents fertilization in decreasing sperm mobility, whereas the marina coil has levonorgestrel coated to the coil, causing cervical mucus thickening, strict endometrial proliferation. The copper coil can be used as immediate contraception and usually is licensed up to five years, but often makes periods heavier and more painful. The marina coil is relied upon after seven days, so barrier contraception is required in that time and is effective up to five years. However, in HRT, it's only licensed for four years. It can cause some early bleeding and some spotting up to three months, but usually periods lighten and become absent. There is, however, a risk of uterine perforation, cervical shock, and expulsion, which the patient needs to be counseled about. You should also be aware of two other hormone intrauterine devices. One, the JDES, which is licensed up to three years, which is smaller but has less hormones in the marina, and the Kylina, which is smaller but licensed up to five years. Next, implantable progesterone. Implanon and Nexplanon are the only currently licensed implantable contraceptives in the UK, with the latter favourable due to the more superficial insertion and its radio-opaque. Both contain etonogestrel and thickened cervical mucus. By definition, they are actually the most effective form of contraception, with a failure rate of 0.07 per 100 women and lasts actually for three years. It's effective immediately and it's inserted on day one to five of the cycle, otherwise a seven-day barrier protection is needed. Another benefit is that it can be inserted immediately after termination of pregnancy. The downsides are it does cause irregular heavily bleeding, as well as the need for a trained professional to insert it. Side effects commonly include headaches, nausea, acne and breast pain, as per other progestogenic side effects. Like the POP, the UK met contraindications are currently breast cancer and pregnancy, with similar ischemic heart disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding considered UK MEC 3. Again, I'd advise you to look at this yourself. And finally, injectable progesterone. For the purpose of your exam, Depo-Provera is the only injectable you really need to know about and it contains 150mg of medroxyprogesterone, given every 12 weeks. Recent studies have suggested there's a leeway for up to 14 weeks where the patient is covered, but it's currently not licensed for that. The other injectable is Noristorat, which is needed every 8 weeks, but it's hardly ever used. Like the other progesterone-based drugs, it can cause weight gain, acne, breast tenderness and irregular bleeding, but importantly there's the additional side effect of some suggestion that it might cause an earlier risk of osteoporosis, so this needs to be considered. Also, it can take up to 12 to 18 months for periods and fertility to return, so it's worth bearing this in mind. The only UK MEC4 contraindications currently are active breast cancer and pregnancy. And with that, that's a wrap. I hope this has settled some nerves about when it comes to contraception and what patients should be counselled about before deciding. It's always going to be a confusing topic, but I hope this video goes a long way to helping you out in understanding contraception further. Like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I really appreciate the support this channel has received so far. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.